Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and uh, <coughs> apologize, my throat's a little. I was eating a granola bar with Nutella in it. Anyways, that's not why we're here. This is the Hinderer Investigator Pen, and I'm ready to do my full review on it. If you haven't watched, I've already done an unboxing and a first impressions of this video. If you want to see more on it, you can go back and watch those. But this is a pen that I picked up recently from River's Edge Cutlery. And to kind of, I, I don't want to re-say everything that I've already said in that unboxing first impressions, but basically I already had a nice pen. I had a Urban Survival Gear, I think it's called the Tie Scribe. It's a really cool kind of bolt action style pen, all titanium, really nice pen. I've owned that now for a couple of years and I've enjoyed it thoroughly. Carry it a lot, use it a lot. And it's just been a, a very good piece of gear for me. And when I bought that pen, I was torn on the idea of spending a hundred bucks on a pen. It sounded kind of bonkers to me, especially with how much I like to spend every dollar of my disposable income on knives, particularly and when I'm buying gear. I don't only buy knives. Sometimes I buy lights or new packs or there's stuff that I buy, but... I spend most of my money on knives, you've probably noticed. So when I wanted to finally like try a nicer kind of EDC style pen, at first I was looking in the like $30 range and there were some options that were kind of intriguing. And I, I think I put up a poll on my Instagram asking people what they recommended if they were into pens. Like if you've got one and you like it, what's your favorite? If you've tried a few, especially like, let me know what your preferences are. And it was far and away, the highest answer was that tie scribe pen. I think that was before these came out or were at least kind of in the spotlight like they are now. <coughs> anyway, because so many people recommend it, I was like, all right, I'll just up my budget. I'm gonna buy once, cry once, spend more and get the piece of gear that has the best case for being what I'll actually use and carry. And I kind of like doing that. It's almost like when I got my fluted carbon fiber native five, that spider co that was me giving backlocks a chance for a lot of people. If they're going to try to like trial run a piece of gear, they might start with what's really cheap because it's a low risk to try it. Like I could have gotten a really cheap backlock knife for 30 bucks or less or whatever. But I wanted to give it the most fair shot, give it the shot of if I was going to get into this, what would be like the the real piece of gear I'd actually want with that feature? What would be the real pen that I'd actually want if I was just going to be into pens now? And so I got that tie scribe and genuinely really, really, really quite liked it. I'm still very fond of it, still use it a lot to this day, but the whole buy once cry once thing was the idea was I was just going to have one pen and I didn't want to start a pen collection. I still don't necessarily want to start a pen collection, but I did start to get to a point recently where it was like, I wouldn't mind having one more pen. I know that's a dangerous thing for those of us who are prone to collecting things, but with how much I was using it, it became somewhat justifiable to like, hey, this is actually one of my most used pieces of gear that I carry a lot, use a lot. I'm getting the most mileage out of. If I had another one, it would be more justifiable in a lot of ways than buying another knife that I already have 30 of, you know? So all of that being said, I was looking around on River's Edge Cutlery site and I was looking at the pens they had available, and I saw there's a bunch of Hinderer Investigator pens now. And I see these relatively often on Instagram and stuff, people posting them in their pocket dumps, and um, I've known several people who've carried them and really liked them. And this is a very different pen from the Tie Scribe that I already have. That one's titanium, and it's focused on being kind of lightweight and slim and sleek, and it functions really well. I've put a couple of refills in it already because I use it so much that I've actually like gone through ink in it, which with disposable pens, I've, I don't think I've ever gone through an entire ink in a disposable pen before I lose it or get rid of it or whatever. So that's another thing to be said. Having an expensive pen, I care for it more. I don't lose it. I know exactly where it is at all times. And if I hand it to someone to let them borrow, I make sure I get it back. If it's a $2 pen, I lose pens all the time. Anyway, so what was I saying? That one's more slim and sleek, etc. 
And this one's more tactical, if you will, but this one's also smaller. So it's kind of this funny thing where it's like a small tactical item. I feel like a lot of tactical pens are like really thick and long and they're meant to be like a coupaton or whatever they're called. And this kind of has that in the sense that, as you can see, it's like super grippy. The way this is machined, it's like almost a little too sharp and we'll talk about that too, but it's very grippy and it's got this hardened tip on it, which it's like, I assume it's for glass breaking, but it's actually got like a pretty pokey point on it. I'm going to, I think, switch this to one of the flat ones because I don't carry glass breakers. That's not something I foresee needing. Um, maybe that's a dangerous thing to say. I should knock on some wood here, but I just, I, I don't like pokey things. Like uh, my knives can have sharp tips on them, but they fold in or go in a sheath. And this is just like, it's a little pokey for me. I'm not totally sold on that. And the, the nature of it being like tactical doesn't do anything for me other than I do think it looks cool. I, if I was in an absolute pinch and needed to use it sometime for self-defense, then cool, I have it. But I'd pull a knife in a situation like that before I'd pull a pen and I'm always carrying a knife. I don't know. It makes sense to me and it doesn't that it's tactical. I get for some people that's a big selling point. But for me, the real thing was I, I dig the design. I like aesthetically, this one is the stainless steel version and it's what's called the battlefield pickup finish. And it's this really cool like heat torch anodized kind of that's like just kind of looks distressed all over. And this is a piece of gear that I want to be able to like chuck in a pocket whether it's clipped or not or whatever. And if it gets banged up and beat up, no sweat off my back. It is not something I want to keep looking pretty. So the fact that this one came in this cool like kind of worn finish that I like that doesn't look like scratched up but just has this like character to it i really dig that i like it quite a bit so beyond the finish and all of that i guess the the real selling point for me on this knife was the size and it's turned out to realistically actually be my favorite thing about it this is much smaller than my other pen specifically lengthwise it's just shorter. So if I put this in a smaller like pants pocket or whatever, it's not dipping too far. Even some of my shirt pockets, I'll wear like button up short sleeve shirts in the summer. They don't have very deep shirt pockets. And so I don't like it when my pen like bottoms out and the clip doesn't even contact all the way. This knife is very comfortable to wear in anything. Sometimes if I'm wearing a button up or a polo, I'll even just put it like in the where the buttons go. This is comfortable like that. It's not super lightweight. In fact, it's pretty heavy for its size, but I don't mind the weight. And because it's so small, it's not like actually heavy. It's just heavy for its size. And so it feels very solid and substantial in hand. Like when I'm riding with this, the balance and the weight of it is quite nice. The one thing I'll say though about riding with it, if I'm going to be riding for an extended period of time, not just like making a quick list or something, but I'm actually gonna like be writing down paragraphs of information or taking detailed notes. This is not the knife, or sorry, this is not the pen that I will pick because with how harsh this machining is on it, it's very uncomfortable for anything more than like a few minutes of writing. It's fine if I'm just taking it out to jot some stuff, which is most of what I do with an EDC pen anyways. But yeah, extended writing, this will get very uncomfortable very quick because even like the threads where this cap screws on, all of these machined bits, it's harsh. It's very harsh. And that's because it's tactical, I assume, to give you more grip to puncture through something with it. So it kind of loses me there a little bit. But overall, the way this functions as an EDC pen, in my application for it, having it in pocket when I'm out and about, if I need to write down on my shopping list, or if I'm up here and I want to make some notes about a video idea or um, check off videos that I've already done so I don't accidentally film something twice because sometimes I'm filming a bunch of stuff in one day and it's like, did I shoot that this morning? I, I can keep lists and I can, I still write things down in 2020 and I like the tangibility of writing things down on paper and crossing things off and an EDC pen is great for someone like me who does that kind of thing. And this fits that role really well. If you're looking for a pen to sit down and write novels with, I do not recommend this one. 
This is like a tactical EDC pen, but for me, it, it really does fit what I want to do with it well. And if I had to pick this one or my tie scribe, which one would I pick? That's a hard question because this one carries a little better, but that one's way more comfortable to write with. It's a little bit lighter and I think it looks kind of classier. This, if I'm in a suit, I feel like is a little much <laughs> to pull out. Not that I'd really be that worried about it. I don't know what circumstance people are going to like judge me for the pen that I'm using. But when I pull out the tie scribe, um, like I've carried it to church a few times and stuff, I see a, a, generally if I pull it out in front of people, people are like, oh, wow, it's a really cool pen. And then I'm like, here, check it out. It's titanium. Like they, there's a cool factor to it. This is a different type of cool and is less welcome, I think, in those types of environments. But it would be workable. And also if you got a different finish, this one's also kind of distressed. Maybe if you got one that was just black or just plain, or I, I don't know, it, it could certainly look classier if you spec'd it out in a different way. But I like having both. I, I carry them for different types of days and activities. Like if I'm going somewhere nice and I'm putting on a collared shirt, that's not like a Hawaiian shirt. Um, then the tie scribe is probably the better pen. But if I'm just in stuff like this and I'm having a normal day and I'm running to the store while I'm out and I want to be able to cross stuff off my list, this is the better pen for me and the way I use it. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked that I have both. I don't plan to get rid of either. I don't have to just have one. I'm allowed to have two of something and that's fine. And for me, it works really well. I apologize. This also probably looks weird for a lot of you because I'm left-handed. So you're used to seeing pens in the right hand. Anyways, it works for me because since I'm left-handed, I can write while I'm right-handed with a knife so I could defend myself while I'm... I'm just kidding. This nonsense. Anyway, I really like this pen. And uh, River's Edge Cutlery has a, a bunch of options for these in stock, by the way. When I was looking a couple of days ago, there were they have aluminum ones, they have steel ones like this. I'm not sure if they do titanium maybe, um, but they've got a bunch of different finishes, anodized ones and ones that are battlefield pickup like this and some that I think were like Cerakoted or DLC coded. There's a whole bunch. And so I will link to the Hinderer Investigator pen kind of section on their site. I'll like link it to that search query or whatever. So that's what comes up if you click that link down below. Um, but yeah, thank you so much to River's Edge Cutlery, by the way. They're just awesome. They send everything so fast. They take care of my orders super quick. They are super supportive of my channel in terms of sharing my videos in their newsletters and on their site. And they shouted me out on Instagram like a week ago. And I got a ton of new followers and subscribers from that. And if you like what I do, you should like the guys at River's Edge Cutlery because they're, they're just awesome. And they use their gear, they know their gear, they, they're, they're real dudes who are actually in this hobby like we are if you're watching this video. Um, although maybe you're watching this video for a pen. Usually I'm used to talking about knives. Maybe there's some people that are pen nuts in here. If you're a pen nut, sound off in the comments. I'd like to talk to you and see uh, maybe there's a whole deeper world of pens that I should be starting to dabble into. Although that's dangerous. I don't know that I want a, another hobby. <laughs> anyway... The guys at River's Edge Cutlery are awesome. And uh, yeah, they've been helping me out a ton since I started my channel by just being super supportive. So show them your support as well. If you're looking for a piece of gear that they carry, give them your business. They, uh, they deserve it. Anyway, this is the Investigator Pen by Hinderer. And it's actually the only Hinderer piece of gear that I think I own at the moment. So maybe I'll need to these days get an XM18 or an XM24 to go with it. I've been thinking about that. We'll see. Time will tell. I haven't made a decision yet. You and I both know that's probably going to happen soon. Anyway, hinder a pen, investigator. That's what it's called. Battlefield pickup, stainless steel. I don't know much else what to say about it. I'll link to maybe this one specifically down below. I don't know. I'll link to their pens. You can figure it out. This has been fun. Thanks for watching and uh, appreciate everybody's support. Thank you to my Patreon patrons. Thank you to River's Edge Cutlery. Thank you to those of you who are subscribed, who like, who comment, follow me on Instagram, who bought t-shirts, who bought stickers. Appreciate all of you. I'm having a ton of fun doing this. So thanks everybody. And I will talk to you soon.